welcome to the 77th episode of the Nerdum and Other Nonsense Anime Podcast. Today, we are bringing you the first half of our winter 2019 season first impressions, based on the first few weeks of shows that have finally aired. As always, we include timestamps in the description of the YouTube video and the podcast feed if you only want to hear about one or two specific shows. Since we spoil literally everything, but, you know, there's only two episodes or three episodes out, so what are we going to spoil? Come on. I mean, you could still spoil some shit. You never know. <laughs> It's true. I could. I could. Like I just, this. Exactly. Like I just spoiled you. How does it feel, become? I feel spoiled and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I'm going to spoil the episode 3 ED of Kaguya Love is War, which has now made all other dance animation and anime obsolete as Chika's dance is the cutest, most fluidly animated dance routine ever. Yeah. And I will watch it on repeat until my eyes start bleeding. Also with me are Cat and Leo. <laughs> it's funny because I said the only thing I liked about that show is Chica, and that was before episode three. <laughs> me oh too! <laughs> no, and, and I fought with Become about this so hard in the chat. I was like, of course you fucking love Chica. Because like all you want in this world is like a wife who has only two brain cells to rub together and just follows you around asking you like, what is grass? What is it's sky? the sky? other two that makes her shine so much <laughs> they are so dull that she's uh, the like i said she's just the only interesting thing on the screen for me she's just so fucking stupid oh, she's the best unfortunately <laughs> we won't be talking about kaguya today because we've split up the season into two episodes to keep it manageable uh but yeah we will talk about it in episode 78 so look forward to that mm -hmm. uh meanwhile did we get up to any nonsense this week leo Oh, ye well, <laughs> oh, let me tell my tale of uh -huh. trying to get the stupid <laughs> guest passes for Anthem. Oh. Kat, you're going to be amazed at how much patience Leo can have when he actually wants to do something. It's okay, incredible. So, Anthem, the demo came out Friday. I, I was off work. It came out at noon, and I sat in my chair trying to log in for six straight hours you did not the servers but no. i did too there are other I sat things here. well he was doing other things you were doing something else in the background weren't i you, was Leo? watching hunter x hunter okay oh, yeah, you and i'm just sitting there hitting a on my controller and like looking over my shoulder to see if i'm logging in yet they i don't i don't know when they finally got that fixed but i was able to finally get in the next day and I'm supposed to, get, because I pre-ordered, I'm supposed to get three guest passes, give one to BCOM, Kyle, and uh, Katron. And, but they weren't showing up, and they weren't showing up, so I started doing some research, and finally what I figured out was basically any everybody on Xbox, nobody was getting their uh, guest passes. They basically just had to go through uh, tech support. So I'm like, all right, let's go through tech support. Oh, it's a 50 to 55 minute wait. Fuck. <laughs> so I waited the 55 minutes, got in touch with, with an advisor, and th that part went pretty well. We got it figured out. I, at the time, I really wasn't sure which EA account I had tied to my Xbox. We figured that out. And then they sent me my guest passes and I gave it to them. And then we played. But even then, like the game had a really bad problem with the uh, loading screens freezing. <laughs> Oh my god, you it just was had so to bad. Completely turn off the game and just turn it back on. And like they <laughs> called it every time. <laughs> they called it a demo, but this this was a fucking beta if I ever saw one. Almost so. an alpha. <laughs> the way it didn't yeah. work. But <laughs> oh man. If you want to learn more about our experience with Anthem, uh there's an upcoming episode on Anime Radicals about it. So we'll tell you everything there. <laughs> yeah, you can look forward to that. Uh, yeah, I got some I got some good stuff I can say about that game. <laughs> good and bad <laughs> that just makes me a little bit sad though like you spent so much time what? oh it, it was sad <laughs> on that yeah i and i just finished i just managed to finish the 148th episode of hunter x hunter so i'm done with that now it's no nice. longer on that's, the that's top of that's my good. q and crunchy roll <laughs> <laughs> now you can wait for the manga like all the rest of us <laughs> so apparently well at least i guess it's over now god damn leo <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah what i went through for that game was it was awful <laughs> oh, sounds like it good okay what about you become uh i guess the tiny bit of nonsense i'll talk about was from a couple weeks ago when i was on vacation in florida i don't think i talked about this on a podcast yet i watched all of uh 
or played through all of Bandersnatch on Netflix with my family. I don't think I talked. I don't remember if I, I talked about this shit. you told me about it, but I'm not I'm sorry. Yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. think about that. Okay, so, yeah, it was really fun because it's like the interactive Black Mirror uh, episode that's on Netflix that, like, one person has, like, the controller and the, like, episode will present to you, like, two different options at certain points. So it's like a choose-your-own-adventure thing. And so I had, like, the controller for this Roku uh, while like my whole like extended family was like yelling at me to do like one choice or the other, <laughs> which is just like a great position to be in. Like I, you have to be the certain kind of person to like enjoy being like in that like pressurized position. I really like it though because like if they can't make a decision, I just get to choose whatever I want and, just and then get yelled suffer. at and then laugh at them. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's some really good like twists and weird things that happen in that and. We got one of the endings. There's like five or something total that you can get. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was really fun. I highly recommend trying that out in a group if you have a chance. Uh, it's really good. Hmm. What would you, what'd you say it was called again? Bandersnatch. Hmm. It's good stuff. Okay. I've also been catching up on like Oscar movies, but uh, I will say Black Klansman, uh, the Spike Lee movie is freaking great. I hadn't seen that and that was really good. But other than that, uh, not too much to talk about. Oh, you nice. get up to any nonsense, cat? Well, I was trying to teach one of my friends how to play um, Tropico 5. Because oh, apparently Tropico 6 is coming out soon. I did not know this. Yep. Holy shit, am I going to buy the fuck out of that <laughs> game? Do you know how many... <laughs> I used to love that game. Anyway. <laughs> so I was like, this is how you be... How you, I'm mean, a dictator? <laughs> yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I was doing yeah, that right. fucking game. Oh my god! No, it's a, so yeah, I was I was teaching him. I was like, "This is how you be a dictator. Like, this is how you order everyone around. This is how you destroy people and their lives." It was, it was a very nice, fun time. Yeah, this is the Doraku of video games. Really, when you think about it. <laughs> oh <laughs> oh man! Amazing game. <clears throat> yep. All right, that sounds like a lot of nonsense. You know what nonsense I got up to? I caught up on all of the time I got reincarnated as, as a slime. Ooh. All of it. Impressive. Well, not all of it. All of the first 15 episodes. That's not, that, that's not too bad. <laughs> I was at like episode four, so I had to watch like 11 episodes. It was not that bad. Not like um, you had a six hour binge watch of Hunter x Hunter. <laughs> no, when I was watching Hunter x Hunter, I did binge it over like three days or something. It was insane. Jesus. So that was really fun. But slime. Okay, so here's what I got to say about slime. All right. I know a lot of people love this show. I kind of love parts of this show. And the part of the show that I love is Rimuru because he is a great main character. Yeah, he's the Um, big favorite. He's so good. Um, He's like just like he upends that trend of just like incredibly shitty isekai main characters because (laughs) he's He's actually kind of like a good dude. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah. Or decent slime at least i don't know <laughs> um but yeah he's he's pretty funny like i like his thought process and stuff uh and yeah but like he does kind of fall into this pattern where like oh he meets a new like group or society of people and solves a problem for them with his crazy powers and then they acknowledge him as their leader and then it's like rinse and repeat and he just keeps building like his his yep. like power base you know well, which is kind of fun honestly i thought- it was um, weird how when he meets like the main love interest girl, like what the fuck was that? He's like, "This is the girl I am destined to be with," and I'm like, "What? What yeah, is she's this? A- what the fuck?" It was like fortune telling. It, it was a fortune teller. Well, yeah. It was like That's a uh, was a like, scantily what? clad fortune teller who told him that. Yeah, when he was at the boob bar, that's what they told him. Uh, <laughs> I was like, "What?" The also, fuck? man, does this guy love boob hats? Oh, like, well, he just loves boob boobs. Hats, like if the if this, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love that scene where he's just surrounded by the girls in the in the um, the sex the bar the sex bar, and they're all just squeezing their tits on him, like from all angles. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. You that's know, every, every guy who dream. watches, every guy who watches, it was like, <laughs> he's living my dream. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Golden Kamui is to dick jokes as slime is to boob hats, because there's just like a boob hat every time 
he's around like like when he when they got those ogres into the party and like yep. that one ogre girl with like the horn in her head just like is his secretary and constantly boob hatting him like every five seconds it's ridiculous <laughs> every time she sits down um, oh my God. But yeah, like, so yeah, I, I thought it was going to be interesting when like Kat was talking about that love interest, Shizu, like when she was introduced, I was like, oh, so this is the character that got teased in the beginning of the very first episode. She's going to have like a huge role in this. And like, no, no. Like, <laughs> she's just like they get rid of her so quick. Like, it's just like she's there and she's gone. And she has like a good little tiny arc, but she's just gone. Yeah. And it's weird, though, because she's in the new OP. So I'm like, is she going to come back? Or are we just going to see her inside of him? Because basically he ends up eating her. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, he but, eats everything. <laughs> yeah. Like, and also, okay, uh, this confused me. Because He's when I stopped watching, I, like, watched that the, only the couple first couple episodes. And I was under the impression that he, he fucking tricked that dragon and was like, he he, and now I ate you, bitch, and you're stuck in my stomach forever. But, like, apparently the dragon's still like, he's my friend. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Like, yeah. you got eight, dude. Yeah, not he, your friend. They <laughs> swallowed the dragon because it was like stuck in like some type of seal, and that's oh. why he ate the dragon so that his a uh, predator ability or whatever would uh, eventually break down that seal, and then the dragon could be free because I, they're I friends. I thought that the idea was that he <laughs> would swallow him, take him out of the barrier, and then just like vomit him back up. So when he didn't do it right away, Had I was like, oh, st- he tricked him. Like. <laughs> No, nah, no, he had to swallow the dragon and the barrier all together. So. Yeah, he told the dragon beforehand, like this will take some time. Okay. Like, so, okay. yeah. See, I, I don't know I how got, long, but confused, it'll be a while. I, I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" So, so are you liking the show or not? Because I, I'm definitely entertained by it. I'm like somewhat entertained by it. Yeah. Like visually, the show's not great. The soundtrack's not great. Uh, I also had a big issue with the first OP. It ran for like the first 14 episodes of the show and they put Shrimaru in like human form walking around there. And that's like, that could have been a reveal. Like, why did you put that in the OP? It didn't happen to like, I don't know, at least 10 episodes in, uh, that sounds, seemed like a very unnecessary to have that there. Maybe it was eight episodes. I don't know. Still, it was like far in. Um, the new OP makes it like clear. The next step is to introduce this like really friggin flimsily clad demon lolly who <laughs> just wears nothing uh so that'll be interesting i guess i don't know but yeah also i do thought it was kind of weird like so every time rimuru gives somebody like a name like they level up right so if they're like right. a goblin they level up their ogre they level up but like when the goblins and ogres level up they become like more human well especially the ogres they become more human in appearance. Human is master race, be calm. Exactly. I was like, this is a little master racey to me. Like, I thought they would become more, like, ogre-ish. You know, like, like You know, I didn't really have a problem ogres. with it until the ogres turned out. I was like, man, I like their old designs better. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why. I was like, I really like those ogre designs. Then they were, like, just turned them into, like, hot humans. And I was like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. It's like... It's okay from week to week, but the pace is really slow, and it's also not doing anything, like, super interesting. So I just don't know. Like, I'm not, like, entirely against watching it, uh, but I think there might be better options to watch. So Wait until you see what else is out there. (laughs) (laughs) Man, I I will just say this season is there are a couple of good shows, but the rest of it, I'm just like, uh, how do I make a top five with this crap <laughs> how do you make a top five? Oh shit <laughs> we're not even you're not even a top 10 you're just top five god damn <laughs> i gotta i gotta start small oh, man. it's a bad season i don't think it's that bad like there, there aren't as yeah. many good shows as normal but like there are some good ones that i'm there enjoying. are a couple yes yeah. speaking of which the next show is called the dororo or um, edward sword hands the fucking best is what it is. Holy <laughs> shit. Uh, Aaron on Amazon Prime. This is based on a Osama Tezuka manga from 1967, which has been adapted a few times before now, but MAPA well, but, like, is adapting this. Can you really one. call it adapted? Because like, I saw that <laughs> shit. That was like a cartoon drawing on a piece of napkin. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> there were different standards back then, all right? <laughs> and what um, matters is how amazing this one looks, so... Yeah, yeah, it's from director Kazuhiro Furuhashi, who directed, like, the Gundam Unicorn OVAs, like, 
the original Hunter Hunter series, not 2011, and like Rurouni Kenshin. So like very talented, experienced director. Um, yeah. So this anime, man, it's kind of weird. It starts off. It introduces this character named Daigo, Daigo Kagemitsu, who is like the daimyo of Ishikawa during the Sengoku Jidai period, like the Warring States period of Japan. And his people have fallen victim to like epidemics and famine. And it's clear he's like this power thirsty, ambitious guy. So he decides to make a deal with these 12 demons. So he, because he doesn't want to wait on the mercy of Buddha or the other gods anymore. Was it 12? And uh, I think there's 12. Yeah. I so I think, yeah. I thought there was a lot more. In that, like, one little room? I don't think so. I think there were, like, the 12 main ones, but there's a lot more demons in the show that also. Oh, it could be. I don't know. I, I think. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Uh, so he tells them, like, you can have anything of mine that you want as long as I get to, like, rule over the country. And, like, so there's some, like, lightning and shit. And so his it's son. It's all very dramatic. It's all very. It's very dramatic. <laughs> 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 His son is, or his wife is giving birth and has a baby boy, right? And as soon as the boy comes out, you don't see him yet, but he's like struck by lightning from the demons. And like the, like Daigo goes to like look at his son, takes him from his wife and everybody's kind of like scared for a second. And he looks at the son and just got no skin, no eyes, no nose, no just ears, like no limbs. like a bloody piece of something. Like you don't even, <laughs> yeah. you don't even look like a person. He just looks like a piece of steak that someone like left out and was like, oh, what is that? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's something. <laughs> He's like bleeding all over like the swaddling cloth. It's just like, ew, Ugh. it's disgusting. Yeah. But then Daigo just like starts like laughing like maniacally. Oh, He's like know. so happy. <laughs> I, I feel like he just went insane like in that moment. Like that was the moment where he went I, insane. Well, no, no, he was super happy because he knows yeah. his deal with the demons went through. Well, I know, exactly. but that that made him crazy because you don't like yeah. look at your newborn son who's like bleeding all over the place like a piece of steak and are like, yes, this is the best <laughs> thing ever. Like you're insane uh, <laughs> at that point. And kudos to the mom who's like, I love this child. Like, I oh, really no. love him. I, I thought she was probably <laughs> insane, too. I was like, girl, I don't know what they gave you when you started, like, having labor pains or whatever, but you're on something. <laughs> like, That's okay. some postpartum stuff right there. Nobody yeah. looks at a baby bleeding all over the place like that in, like, medieval Japan and is like, I think this will be fine. Like, no, you know it's not going to yeah. be fine. So basically what happened was all these demons <laughs> took different parts of his body, which is why he's yes. a fucking stump. And uh, <laughs> well, what is interesting, though, they had like a, a, a statue in there of like some type of goddess or something like that. Yeah. And its head snapped off. And what you find out later on is that that goddess like sacrificed themselves, which is the only reason... Uh, he was even alive and to begin with to survive any of that. That sounds like a spoiler. <laughs> no, that's in the first no, episode. It's in the first episode. Oh, wait, is it? Uh, okay, I thought. I guess I read that differently. Okay. Well, first of all, he gets taken away, the baby. Right? He gets sent down the river like friggin' Moses. Oh, uh, no, I was like, are they trying to borrow or something here? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. He, he also gets noticed by this like a blind priest. Uh, but we get to see him more in episode two. Then we get a 16 year time skip. And so uh, we meet this man named Jukai who is like giving, he's putting these like prototype prosthetics on this like dead guy on the side of the road. And like, it turns out he does this as a way of like mourning them or at least that's what the passerby says about it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it becomes clear that like that young baby survived and he uses similar prosthetics as a means of like overcoming his curse, basically. Which is, yeah, which is interesting because in the summary, it says that that guy saved him. But you don't see uh, that sure. in the first epi first two episodes. You're just like, I think okay. that'll be episode three because it's the title has Jukai's name in it. Uh, um, probably. So that makes sense. Yeah, uh, the, this show is just so epic. I don't know. Yeah, the whole time you're watching it, you're just transfixed by everything that's occurring. Yeah, it's got a really great style to it. Um, like Map is doing a really amazing job with it. It's like, I wish Angle Moi had looked like this. Oh, <laughs> I know. That I would have been amazing. I wish it as interesting as this. Like, yeah. the whole time you just are saying to yourself, like, what's going to happen? And I, I kept doing that thing while I was watching this where I turned to the person I was watching it with and go, what's going to happen? What do you think? And they're like, I don't fucking know, Kat. 
what we'll see together. <laughs> <laughs> so the other big main character is this little boy named Dororo, who is like a little like street scamp. He's like trying. He's like stolen some goods from other people to like sell, and they catch up, catch on to him, and they try to like beat the shit out of him. And they do. They like like kick the kick this little kid's ass. Um, but yeah, he's saved basically um, by. I guess we find out later his name is Hakimaru, who is the boy, like the boy grown up. Um, and yeah, like, so they kind of like start like hanging out together. Well, um, he, that's the, the guy, he fights that giant trash monster on that bridge. Oh, yeah. and that was so good. That jumping around epic. everywhere. Oh, it was amazing. God. And the it little looked boy so good. is like, what, what's he doing? Hmm. And that's so epic. He's pulling his hands off with his teeth, and there are just fucking swords there and shit. It's oh yeah, it's awesome. The boy like rolls with it, like Dororo just rolls with it though. It's kind of cool. He's just like kind of like intrigued by this guy, and he's like, "Are you even human?" And so yeah, when when Hyakimaru defeats that like garbage monster, I I read it as like that was like one of the demons because when he defeats him. Like yeah. the temple got back his, home his snaps, skin back, I think. yeah, he and he gets his skin, skin back, back. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so, like the episode two is about like uh, uh, another demon woman named Bandai, who's like this monster in this village. I, I who, laughed yeah. when they were her name was Bandai. <laughs> Bandai Nyoko. <laughs> <Like>, it's <laughs> like they're trying to say that the whole company is a demon in disguise, <laughs> the devil. <laughs> Makes sense. Just feeding off of the villagers who are their customers. Yes. Mm. Um, yeah, these like villagers were like feeding her people basically to keep her happy and to like make money off of like the the coins that they would drop. And so they figured this out. And it turns out like basically uh Hyakimaru, the way he can see is he can see like this he doesn't even have like real eyes, but he can like see the souls of other people and they he see views visualizes them as like a flame. And if the flame is pure white, that means they're good. If it's like a blood colored, that means they're very bad. And so that's what this woman Bandai is. And so it turns out she's like a weird like snake demon, and he ends up taking her down as well. And like it like when he gains something back from her this time, it seemed like it was like some sort of like bodily structure or muscle tissue or something like it was underneath his skin so i don't know vascular system something like that so (laughs) yeah he's slowly gonna like gain back all of his bodily stuff lolly platelets back (laughs) (laughs) the platelets are in there they're like we gotta fix all this shit oh man it's good so yeah i'm really Mm. liking the show a lot it's it's really cool i really like the op I uh, adore it's this. Good. The OP oh my God, is the, very popular. Like, the party's over, but I don't want to start the day. So, yeah, that's a pretty good song. Oh yeah, like have it stuck the in my head. Over. Yeah, it's really good. Is it better than the Kimi no Se or whatever you fucking Oh, it say? has to be better than that. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! That's in the past, Leo. We don't, don't speak don't of it bring anymore. That up. Oh my God! Do you realize what you've done? Do you realize what you've done? <laughs> no, I was. Yeah, perfectly. I chose my words on purpose. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let's move on. The next show, Mob Psycho 102. Ooh. Uh, you know if you're watching this or not already. That's all I got to say. Yeah, pretty much. Like you've probably seen <laughs> yeah. Mob Psycho 100. If you know not, go watch it. it. It's a great show. Yep. Um, obviously from the same creator of the manga of One Punch Man. Uh, and the director of this season, Yuzuru Tachikawa, also directed season one and Death Parade. And also noteworthy, there's music by uh, Kenji Kawai, who also did the music for first season, but also, you know, Ghost in the Shell, Pat Labor, Barakamon, great so composer. So basically they just brought everybody back. <laughs> yeah, Bones brought the whole fucking team back. And man, it really shows because like... If, I even feel like they've learned some things from first season and it, it's like at like a higher level of quality now. Like, yeah that's pretty damn good I I, agree with especially that. in episode two like it that shows specifically how good it can do action scenes it was insane but going so what back, did you what did you like about that action scene in uh episode two if I, you remember just the way it looked uh they have it has its own very unique style which mm-hmm. is pretty obvious when you look at it uh and it just it just looks really good and nice but Going back to the episode one, I was kind of surprised by the love story. Like, oh yeah, I didn't remember it doing storytelling that well the first season. So I'm like, whoa. 
No, yeah, this is like one of the best things. Like the episode starts out like normal enough, right? It's like Mob and Reagan, they're yeah. on a farm, you know, and they're like exercising a demon who's causing like the local farmer's crops not to grow, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Reagan, they, they exercise it. The farmer can't pay. Reagan gives Mob some like broccoli seeds. He's like, thank you. It's like a little tiny packet that oh, fits in his like coat pocket. And that's all he gets. <laughs> so He's ridiculous. like, I'm getting paid in kind now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then like uh that girl Ichi Mazato, who's like the news club girl, is trying mm-hmm. to get the like remaining members of that LOL cult to believe that Mob <laughs> will be their founder. Blah blah blah. Uh, <laughs> but she needs Mob to grow as a person, right? Because yeah. like no one would follow him as he is. Yeah, this show is like doing this great job of like reintroducing all the characters. Mm. You even get like really good examples of like their personality types, like they just nailed this first episode so well. Mm-hmm. I yeah. Thought. Like, yeah, it's so good. Cause like, so he goes back and she's like, you need to run, run for student council president. Cause then like your crush Subomi might actually like think of oh, you as like a so person. She's so good at manipulating him. I was so <laughs> amazed. <laughs> well, mom is very easily to manipulate. Yeah. But, but still like she is good at it. And so like he goes to try to give his like student council speech and he completely freezes up. Can't get a word out. Just oh, unbelievably embarrassing. I felt this. I cringed real hard because I've had trouble with public speaking in the past, like in middle school and high school. And like, oh, uh, like, you know, those nightmares that you get that like are like just like you not even nightmares. You're just like sitting awake at night and you just think of like, oh, that time in seventh grade where my hands were trembling when I gave a speech and somebody told me about it afterwards and my life was over. You know, I've <laughs> never I've never had stage fright. It's never really bothered me. Uh, I was actually the I had the lead role in the school play when I was in fifth grade. Huh. Oh, that's awesome. So like, yeah, I've never been really bothered by it. Every once in a while, I, can, I feel slightly nervous. But as soon as I like start speaking and i'm done with it well good so. for you leo yay i know i just like i just <sighs> want you guys to know how superior i am to my fellow human beings <sighs> for me it gets better with like repetition like i am sure. not nearly as scared now as i was back in like middle school or something but it took a lot of practice and repetition to get to a point where i'm like okay i can be under control when I'm doing stuff like this. See, the trick is just not caring what other people think. <laughs> That's a good trick. I wish I could have done that in middle school. <laughs> oh man. So, uh, after he like bombs this speech, this girl named Emmy just comes up to him, like asks him like to, or gives him a note in his locker, I guess, asking to meet him like after school, like a obvious, like love note, like a confession yeah. type note. And she, like, confesses to him. She's like, I, I thought your speech was, like, really brave, and I want to, like, go out with you. And he's like... <laughs> and then so, like, they end up, like, going out. He doesn't, like, really accept, but, like, they go out anyway. Um, and he starts, like, learning about her. Like, she starts hanging out with him. She's been writing this novel, um, which he thinks is really cool. And it turns out, though, that, like... So they're, oh, like... Yeah. This yeah, like so a week sad. goes by, right? And she's and like, like, I just was, I was hanging, I was only dating you because I was told to do it because, like, I lost a bet. And yeah, she got like dared or something like that. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh <laughs> god, don't, oh. Yeah, but what's interesting is like he praised her novel. Yeah, but then when her friends show up, they're like, oh, this piece of garbage, and they like tear it up and throw it away. And then doesn't Mob like give them a piece of his mind? Pretty yeah, much. well, he's she's basically like, oh, yeah, of course, I'm not taking it that seriously. She tries to, like, play it off like right. it doesn't hurt her. And then he comes up and, like, they've torn up the pieces of the novel and it's laying on the ground. And he starts picking them up and he, he's, like, telling them, like, I've chosen to, like, care about my feelings more. And, like, you have to pick up the That's things that really matter good. to you. It was and really good. It's really good. And then she she comes over and she starts picking it up and she tells her friends, to like, fuck off, basically, go home. <laughs> uh, and yeah, like, it was really nice. And like, Mob has like a new friend now. I was like, man, that was such a good introduction back to this show. Um, yeah. And yeah, like Leo was talking about in episode two, they had this amazingly animated, like, thing. Like, oh, I was saying, I wish they'd uh, animated Angle Moi like Dororo. I wish they'd animated Ito Junji Collection like this episode. Cause, like, that Ringu woman <laughs> was like the, the dragger. Running, oh, the running man. grandma. Is that what you were talking about? <laughs> <laughs> or, like, you remember in the woods or whatever? Like, the model was like running through the woods and stuff. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like thinking of that too. Cause they were like in the woods and they're like being followed. And yeah. I don't know. It's just. It was all like very unsettling. 
Um, and yeah, this like woman like battles this new psychic dude named Bancho Maru Shinra, who is like clearly going to be kind of like a competitor with Reagan, which I kind of really like. Mm-hmm. Um, and also there's this like red raincoat guy who is just like a flasher who's trying to flash little girls. <laughs> and you just keep seeing his butt. Like the whole yeah. thing. It's just like, do you want another shot of his butt? No? Well, here we are giving you one anyway. It's like, I didn't want yeah. to see it. <laughs> so, yeah, they just keep introducing these like weird, interesting characters. And I just can't get enough of it because it's all animated so well. And Mob is such a likable character. And so is Reagan, honestly. Dude, I was laughing so hard at the running grandma, which is how the episode ends. Oh, right? I know. And it's like, and yeah, this yeah. is the first time that Mob was scarred by one of these urban legends. <laughs> it's so bizarre. That's the thing about like mob psycho it's just so bizarre like you just don't you just love to laugh i don't know it's good it doesn't take itself too seriously and that's what makes it a good show it's like it's entertaining it's got a good storyline that has good like i think underlying characters and like themes to it but it doesn't take itself too seriously you know it it knows it's there for the laughs too so you know i like it yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. uh let's move on to the next show (laughs) So I can't believe I watched this. <laughs> Did you finish? Uh, well, so the show is Kimono Friends season two. Did you ever finish the first season? No, I haven't seen a minute of the first season. I watched like six episodes of the first season. I never didn't quite finish it. I'll pr- I'll probably go back and check it out. Bless you, cat. Uh, and uh, so yeah, like this is weird one because the first season was very successful despite being like a kid's show because it had this weird like strange element to it like this weird backstory that it's like this post-apocalyptic zoo where this human is hanging around with these like komodo friends animal people um and it's very mysterious and you can understand why because it's from this director named tatsuki who is also making a show this season called kamuri kusa um but he's not making season two and the reason why is there was this weird copyright dispute with like the company Katakawa Shoten who fired him because he was basically making smaller mini episodes of the series. Like this entire thing is like his brainchild. He's the old, he's like the so one of the main reasons it's even popular in the first place. Like hmm. why it would even have a season two, but Katakawa like fired him because they thought he was like overreaching his bounds. And then they also had this weird thing where they made the voice actors of the show like apologize publicly on behalf of the company for all of the like, I don't know, controversy, which felt like a weird move to make Man, them apologize. Japan does dumb stuff like that, especially like with like <laughs> yeah. idols and stuff. Yeah. I, what yeah. the hell? And so, yeah, now it's at a new studio. I think it's a new studio anyway. Yeah. Tomasan. And the director is Ryuichi Kimura, who has made the show like Aikatsu. Um, and so it's, it's like, I don't know, like despite all of that change, it feels like pretty similar to the first season to me. Like they've changed up the character designs a little bit. They're maybe a little bit stiffer. They, they, but they're kind of like cutesier at the same way. Like, I don't know. They kind of remind me of like the Pokemon sun and moon designs, if I'm going to be honest. Um, and it's basically the same, the first season over again, except with a different human girl. That is like replacing Kaban from last season. This girl's name, the Serval, who is returning character, uh, calls this girl Kururu because her stomach makes a Kururu sound when she's really hungry. Oh, will you do uh, that again, Become? What, what was that no. noise? Kururu! <laughs> <laughs> I can do it every time. Perfect. I'm a voice actor. We should make that a drop of some good. <laughs> So, yeah, like, I don't know. It's the same dynamic. It's like human girl f- f- wanders into Japari Park Zoo or whatever, finds animal friends, and they, like, help her try to figure out what the heck's going on and where she belongs. Um, so it's, like, basically the same thing. I was kind of annoyed because they got rid of, in the middle of the old episodes, they had these, like, <laughs> these really lowly, low-quality produced things where, like, an actual like zoo worker or like a zoologist or someone would like talk about the animals that are being introduced in the episode and like just give you like cool facts about them. But they took that out because they're like, Oh, screw education. We don't need that anymore. <laughs> um, too boring. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so I was kind of annoyed that they removed that because I thought it like added to the show, but yeah, it's just, it's not anything 
essential to watch. It's just I will like, say when uh, I watched it, this is clearly meant for like a six year old niece <laughs> yeah. or something. Like I was, uh, yeah, I'm like, this is not for me. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have that same sense of mystery, maybe as much as the first <laughs> season did. But if you already watched the first season, like I wouldn't say like just boycott this on like principle well, or anything. Like give it a shot. To, right. Like a lot of people want you to boycott it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like instead of boycotting it, just watch Tatsuki's new show, Kamari Kusa, and then also Don't, watch though, this. Because it's terrible. <laughs> no, it's, it's not, good. though. It's fucking great. No, it's I like not. It. We're Which gonna we will fight get about into. this later. <laughs> Let's talk about a terrible show, though, because mm. we can do that next. Dude, this just needs to be a hentai. That's all I gotta say about this <laughs> oh, next God. one. Pastel uh. memories. Well, it's from the Haida. people who did Is the Order a Rabbit. Are you really surprised? Well, it's not even from those people, I don't think. It's from the people who did uh, Lolly Shogi or Ryo no Oshigoto oh, says, and Angel's Three Piece. Oh, okay. God, Angel's oh, Three Piece. Angel's three. Okay, I thought, I thought you said it's from the same creators. You said it's no. a rip off. No, of it. it just like rips off as the Order of Rabbit. Like, well, it's weird. So, it's also from a first time director named Yasuyuki Shinazaki. Uh, Studio Project 9. It's based on an RPG smartphone game. So we're off to a roaring start. Um, <laughs> you, whenever it says based on a smartphone game, don't walk, run, <laughs> run in the opposite direction. That's what I, I've learned. <laughs> I disagree. Rage of Bahamut is from <laughs> a smartphone game. That's like the exception. Okay, there is, for every rule, there has to be an exception to make it a rule. I for Generally, yeah, it's probably a better idea to run, but... Uh, I I made some interesting observations as I was watching this first episode. Oh, tell uh, me. The first one is the uniforms are uni- very uniquely ta- tailored to cinch their waist so that their boobs stand out way more. Oh, man. And it's uh, like every single one of them. And there's like 15 of main characters somehow that work at this cafe. Yeah. Oh, that they doesn't all have get the any same business. size boobs. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're jiggling everywhere. Uh, the second observation is that these characters' designs, they're just really basic and straightforward yeah. like this is like the generic designs like from a game which it, obviously this is from but there's one girl who is straight up hanakawa from monogatari <laughs> yeah she is straight <laughs> up i don't there's nothing different about her uh, it's really funny <laughs> there was another really weird offer a third observation i made is that there are three twin tails in this show and two twin braids. I'm just like, whoa, you guys got to slow down with all this. That's just, that's way too many twin stuff going on I, I maintain my stance. The only place that twin tails belong is in a porn. <laughs> I said it should be a hentai. <laughs> kind of should be. I mean, if you look at the just the ED of this show, it almost is. Yeah, it's a the, beach episode. The ED is a beach episode. Let's let's not sell it short. It is like all of the girls in the show wearing like either just Brazilian thongs or just like really highly pulled up like bikini bottoms, just f- with huge butts, just <laughs> bouncing their butts back and forth all over the place. Very nice. It is like a fucking Cisco video. Like from <laughs> like it is ridiculous. From it is like, like back that ass up in anime form. <laughs> uh, God damn. So yeah, like the I guess the plot of the show. Why is why boring. we even what, talk what about there it? There is of it. Is that these girls all work at this like maid cafe in Akihabara, but anime is disappearing and otaku are disappearing, uh, and they need to preserve anime it's one of <laughs> for these. future generations. Uh, okay. Um. And they blatantly rip off, like, their cafe is, like, the one from Is the Order a Rabbit, basically. Uh, and, like, the manga they're trying to find in the first couple episodes is in the first volume of Is the Order a Rabbit. And it's like, why? <laughs> why? It's like an homage, I guess, but it's also just, like, straight ripping off this other anime. Like, in the episode two, when they actually go into the world of Is the Order a Rabbit, because that's, like, the thing that they do. They go to the world of the anime somehow, and then they defeat this, like, weird virus, and then they save it, and they come back. You know what? Is at this point that was like, you know what? This is, like, somebody's fanfic, The Girl in the <laughs> Twilight, but they wanted it to be super etchy. 
<laughs> this is like seriously what I th- I think was going on or something. <laughs> yeah, and like anime themes instead of like having an actual plot <laughs> or yeah. something. Yeah. Also, I was kind of like annoyed at how bad the character designs in the girl um is is the order of rabbit like world looked. Like when you when you see like the tippy uh, like rabbit hat in that world, it looks so bad and like so does so do all the girls and like the one thing Gochus has got going for it is got amazing character designs. Like they're very cute girls, but not here. It just like they look horrible. Uh, and yeah, the third episode looks like it's like, going to be about the Rosie Maidens. So it's like an obvious reference to Rosen Maiden, I assume. Are you going to watch uh, it? Let me know. No, I'm just done with this series. Like, this, <laughs> why would I keep watching we should this? All be done with this. Indeed, for the boob jiggle. <laughs> but something we should probably not be done with. No. Ooh. On Tuesdays, run with the wind. Yes! I'm, I'm done with this. Oh, well, no, you're not, because it's coming <laughs> back, Leo. You're going to be forced to watch it. It's going to be a l- amazing. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I enjoyed the new OP for this quite a bit. It was just like the guys running, but I really liked the new ED song a lot. Uh, it's a really nice vocal from Tai Chi Mukai, who also sang the first ED. I thought it sounded really good. I like the opening. I'm, I didn't really pay attention that much to the new ED. But. Oh, I really like it. Um, so yeah, episode 12 starts off with like another race where Yuki and Shindo got their official times, but several of the guys still haven't. They're getting closer, though. Uh, and it turns out that like creepy older guy who was watching Kakaru, if you remember way back when, at the end of last arc, was like a reporter named Shuji Mochizuki, who seems to recognize Kakaru from high school. And he gives Haiji his card and asks for like a future interview about them, basically. Um, so they go to this training camp in the mountains where they can do some like long distance running around a lake. Um, and like it's clear that like Kakaru has like really changed a lot at this point. Like he's a lot more invested in his teammates. He's like really embracing his love of running again. Uh, but like unfortunately, that feeling gets upset when his old teammate Kosuke. Just, like, his team is apparently at the same fucking lake, uh, and they're, like, interrupting the guy's practice to be douchebags. Uh, and so, after, like, some asshole remarks, Kakaru finally, like, almost go- gives in and goes to punch Kosuke. Um, but, like, that's, like, the- a cliffhanger in episode- the next episode. Uh, Haiji stops him from punching him. And then Kosuke goes into this rant about how Kakaru, like, doesn't see his teammates... Uh, which we know has changed because he's started to like pay attention to them. Well, but like, he did, does I care don't about think them. that he ever didn't see because like our, we're gonna go into the flashback, right? True. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Oh, fi- yeah. We're definitely going into it. Yeah. Yeah. You find out like in this flashback that they go into after he goes on the rant about how he doesn't see his teammates that like he basically went nuts at his last school where he w- had the track team and like he fucking punched his coach in the face because. There was another teammate who got injured and he was there on a scholarship and he's like, please coach, like I can run next season. I just can't run this season. And like, I need this scholarship. And he was being a total dick bag to the student. And Kakaru was like, I can't take it. I can't take it. And he like punched the coach in the face. And like, this Mm -hmm. is after the whole team, including the guy who was getting picked on by the coach, who by the way, the coach treated Kakaru really fucking well. Like, the whole team yeah. was treating him like shit. And, like, he still cared more about his team than he did that coach. And so, like, that was never true. It's just that he had a weird hang-up about it because they were all treating him like shit, basically. Yeah, and then, like, back in real time, Kakaru's telling Haiji, like, he's he's worried about this again because he's like, I can't control my emotions and I don't want to hurt this team any more than I already have. And Haiji stops him and is like, hey, just tell everybody. Like, just tell everybody what's on your mind. We're all here for you. We'll listen. And, and then they all have a circle jerk in the morning. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and after oh, they're God. done cleaning up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just had some interesting images in my head. Well, at, at this point, you know which, which characters are shipping with you. It's, it's really fun to see. <laughs> just, like, start to <laughs> so Ka- Kakaru, he like, yeah, he tells his teammates about how he hated his high school track team, how he broke his coach's nose, he lost his college recommendation because of it, and he quit. And as a result of all his actions, his teammates like weren't allowed to compete in track meets that summer. So like he ruined like three years of effort for guys I, like Kosuke. How, is, how yeah. was that? That should be something between him and the coach. It shouldn't have affected the rest of the yeah, team. Yeah, and honestly, it was the yeah. whole coach's 
fault in the first place. Like, I found it incredibly ridiculous that, like, the coach caused all this strife within the team, but then, like, they all blame it on him. It, it doesn't make sense to me. I, it, it's well, something so that can happen, sc- though. It's mm-hmm. like a passing comment, but it's like the school wanted to cover up. Like, they didn't want the bad publicity of this coming out, so they just canceled the running season as if that wouldn't cause yeah, like, the publicity well, to come out. You're yeah. like, oh, uh, why did you, yeah, just, seriously, why did you cancel the entire running season? What's going on here? Yeah, I don't see how that solved it either, but. Um, <clears throat> so as it becomes clear, Kakuru is about to say, like, I want to quit the team before I ruin everything. Everybody stands up and tells him, like, hey, that's all, that's all you're worried about? That's fine. Like, we know who you are, and we all really like you despite who you are. <laughs> and we want to want to run with you. And, like, this is, like, a huge freaking weight off of his shoulders. Kakuru thanks Haiji for believing in him and, like, tells him, like, you know what? I really want to run in the Hakone Ekiden. I want to be serious with this team. And then, like, everybody turns around and is like, we were already serious, you butthead. <laughs> like, why are you now just serious? But, like, it's a big moment for him. And there's, like, this gust of wind as Kakaru and all the whole team are, like, smiling back at him. Um, or Haiji and the whole team are smiling back at Kakaru. And it accompanies this, like, big swell of music. And I got really pumped. And that's when I realized, Kat, we were going to make Leo watch the rest of this show. And it's going to be so are. good. I was like, oh. yes! You know, the, the <laughs> flashback is what sealed it for me. I was like, oh, I'm going to keep watching it now. And, and Leo in the background, like, fuck! No! The real reason, the real reason though, is, like, I feel like we're right on the cusp of where this show is just going to really take off and get really exciting. And also, like, they've built all these characters up now to a point where, like, I do care care about several of them like pretty like very much and seeing them grow and seeing them succeed and even Kakaru who like I have had trouble liking up to this point like I think now that he's finally gotten past like this trauma and like I fully understand where he was coming from and also what kind of person he is and what he was struggling with I'm like really interested they got past his past because it was like all drama and stuff so like if the drama drops off I I'll like this show a little bit better but yeah, I just like yeah. hard eye roll that, that this whole episode, man. <laughs> I feel there's like just gonna bad. be less drama at this point now. Like I think it's gonna be more focused on like actual logistics of like running, getting the times, and like becoming a team and running the Hakane. And like I really want to see that. Like I think it's gonna be good. I think so, it I don't will know. Be. we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how well, the vote goes, but I I'm yeah, we'll, uh, rate that all right. I think we uh, already know that you're gonna be watching it, Leo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And well, you're if you're not watching be, this, Leo, you're definitely going to be watching the next anime, which is you know anime what, Kat, of the century, probably. You're going to be watching uh, Kimiuri Kusa or whatever you say. Oh, <laughs> God. Don't do that. That's just that's just Be spiteful. calm and I both you like it, so it's probably going to get in there. You picks than that bullshit show this season. Have you season. not watched the rest of this season? <laughs> There's uh, not I much have. out there. <laughs> you can, we could be watching that cat show. That would be better than that Kimi whatever the fuck show. What, when my roommate is a cat, see, B. Yes. Come and I both didn't like that show either. We're just oh, kind of like, eh, we'll get to it, though. We will talk about it. <laughs> so the next episode, or the next show we have to talk about, though, is just, man, it's so spectacular. Like, I don't even know. Oh, God. I feel like an angel this flew one. down to me oh, watching no, this show. This really. fucking show. Okay. <laughs> we need to talk about what the fuck is happening to Japan. <laughs> why okay so it's like it's like japan had a meeting and they were like we can't do the child molester thing anymore they've caught on they know it's bad we have to do something else but all of the mangaka in the room were like but we like the child molester thing it's so popular we're all pedophiles so (laughs) we need to keep doing this we need to figure out a way that we can keep doing it and make it still socially acceptable and they all thought about it for a while and they were like you know what what if we make the creepy pedophile a woman an older woman (laughs) That's not scary. And they're like, yeah. And that's what they fucking did. Because this is like the third season where they have one of these goddamn shows. Last season, it was the one with the eye patch. You remember. Who's a maid? Who's a maid? Who's yeah, a maid? This, yep. this season is this fucking show where she basically literally lures this child with candy to come to her house so she can undress her and put her <laughs> in sexy outfits. <laughs> that is the show while she drools and breathes heavily like a creeper but cat it's super cute oh god <laughs> this show 
<laughs> this show is what's wrong with fucking Japan. Japan is uh, sick. It needs help. This is what he shows you people that you want to turn off oh, of anime. Yeah, like if you want to, if you want to make sure that someone never likes anime and never wants to watch another one in their life. Put them down and be like, this is what anime is. And just have this be their first anime. They'll never well, want to touch it again. Yeah, what's sad is the director did some episodes of Soccer Request. Mm. And I yeah, loved that show. he was show. an eps- uh, episode director on Shirobako as well. Yeah. Um, well, he's mean, first. Some, this is his first time directing a full show, Daisuke Hiramaki. There's some, oh. there's some studios and stuff like that where they, they know when they've got to like get down in the mud to, to keep things going. <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> they have their Don't, lean uh, years and their fat years and they, they let it go. Like, isn't there one uh, studio that's pretty old that they've done a lot of like old classics? Like, I think they even did part of Legend of the Galactic Heroes. And then they they now do like porn anime. <laughs> oh, yeah, that happens. Like, you <laughs> like, have to keep the doors open exactly. somehow. <laughs> But like Doga Kobo, I don't feel like they they fit that because like they they've made some good anime like and they have talented animators. I think they just want to work on this. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's it's interesting. Like, oh. I'm torn because like Doga Kobo is really good at animating like cute stuff. But then also you have this just like incredibly toxic shit that it's like if you can't turn your brain off to what is actually happening in the show, like there, it's hard to. I was Watch. so outraged. You can't yeah. turn your brain off. You it's can't. Bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. You know what else is bad? <laughs> the next show. Oh, yeah. I'll talk about this for like three seconds. So Real Girl Season 2. Oh, I, I can't believe I'm saying those words out loud. Just Season 2. I can't believe it. Um, airing on High Dive. Uh, I, I did not finish Real Girl Season 1. I watched like two episodes, I think. And I was just like, this is horrible. Uh, I dropped in on a a group watch of episode three of season two. So I'll give you an update on that. Uh, I was surprised to see (laughs) the guy with the cat ears apparently went through some character development and he no longer wears the stupid cat ears to school. And I was like, wow, this guy's really made some progress. Like he's had a character arc. He's almost watchable now. Uh, He he even has like some romantic prospects with this uh, shy like glasses girl. Uh, But that's all I know. Uh, otherwise there was some like weird dramatic stuff in that episode uh, I still don't recommend watching this show <laughs> it's not very good Yeah, I think I've like intentionally blacked out the episode that I watched of the first season because whenever I think of it all I think is of like is angry thoughts and like like pulsing like heartbeats that's all I can remember uh, so I must have like indeed. almost died or something I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was one of the best romances of last year, and we just we just missed it. We just we just totally missed yeah. it. Uh, I'm I doubt calling it, bullshit on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, we uh, let's take a short break uh, and hear from some. Oh my god, I just blanked some people out. that don't have our voices. <laughs> some other voices, okay, bitches. Listen to them and come back. Sounds like a plan. Okay. <laughs> and here's another tasty morsel from the Trash Pandas Watch Anime Podcast. Some, some fan service. Yeah. Fans I mean, it worked pretty well in Dragon Ball. Do you remember those scenes with Bulma? Bulma was running around in a bunny outfit for the longest time. I know. A Toriyama. <laughs> we can get the Dragon Balls, <laughs> and then we can make our wish. Bulma's panties. <laughs> <laughs> did Oolong wish for Bulma's panties, or did you just wish for a pair of panties? I think it was just a pair of panties. I'm sure it's different in the Japanese than it is in the English dub. But, yeah, he just wished for panties. They're probably used. As always, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter at Trash Panda Anime. You can find us on our website, tpwapodcast.com. You can also find us on assorted sites like SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. Hi. Hey. Do you like wrestling? Whether it be in a bar, an arena, some weird place in Asia, or in a stadium. Or the occasional penis plex. 
Well, if any of these things might tickle your fancy, anywhere in between, from penises to wrestling, you could come and check out our podcast. Our podcast name is Smack It Down. We talk all things WWE, New Japan, anything else in between. I'm Jay Silver. I'm Corey Gold. And we look forward to you joining us. Happy Rusev Day. Happy Rusev Day, indeed. And we are back with the second half of the first half of the winter 2019 impressions. <laughs> just okay. confuse me. Just try to confuse me. <laughs> just make it as complicated as possible, b Go ahead. Why not? Great intro. I know, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so the first show we'll talk about now on Wednesdays. It's this little Shonen Jump show called The Promised Neverland, which is airing on Crunchyroll. Uh, you notice Yaku how Soku smug Neverland. these kids look in the OP? <laughs> well, it's it because like- their mouths are like three feet higher than they should be on their fucking face. <laughs> they but like they also look- do look really smug. Oh my god, the OP, Leo. Fire. <laughs> like, when that guy says fire in the background, I oh, laugh yeah, every time I die. It's so hype. I, I don't know. I really like it. It's really dumb, but also really hype at the same time. I was and these kids it. are like parkouring around the place. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. I I did okay so I had the unfortunate uh, way of okay so recently I watched a show I think it's on is it on Hulu it's like about these kids who they get tested and like the ones that are the most like that aren't smart die and it's all like part of some experiment you you remember this show they just came out the second movie I haven't I don't have Hulu so I don't know if I've seen it or not but like that might be like the Maze Runner or something or like it's like it's like set in modern day but I don't know all I remember is these dumb tablets that they'd take these tests on and they'd be like flashing and everyone would be really oh is it like Divergent maybe yeah I might I don't know but yeah and it reminds me of of this anime it's one of these stupid (laughs) series where you're like but they wouldn't really kill like small grade school children because they couldn't do like two plus four like not really. (laughs) Like, that would fly, but... Um, but what if they did? And yeah. what if they didn't just kill them, they ate them? <laughs> exactly! And then they made it an anime. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically... And, and the tablets they take the tests on are eerily similar, and it was freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> like, <laughs> so... <laughs> this show is from Studio Cloverworks, who made everybody's favorite part of Darlene and the Franks at the end. Uh, oh god! <laughs> just, I'm gonna, every time Cloverworks ever does another anime, that's how I'm going to introduce them. You are so petty. <laughs> Beacon never lets anything go. He's like one of those people. Like you'll have done something to him like four years ago, and he'll make sure to bring it up again. Like he'll make sure to let you know. <laughs> he remembers <laughs> absolutely. So I it's from director uh, Mamoru Kanbei, also, who directed such famous shows as Elf and Lead, uh, Sound of the Sky, Sora no Woto, and The Perfect Insider, which I actually kind of liked. It's not that great of a show, but I kind of liked it. Um, yeah, so it's this weird world where these kids with mouths way too high on their face <laughs> uh, live in this orphanage, quote unquote. Uh, and they all have these mysterious, like, numbers stamped on their necks. Ooh. And, Sorry. And <laughs> and there's, like, a main three of them. There's a girl named Emma, who it took me a really long time to realize she was a girl because she looks like a boy. I stay here. I was, I was I thought it was a boy at first. And then I'm like, oh, this is a girl. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and there, there's two other guys. There's one with white hair named Norman and this emo-looking guy this Sasuke character, as Kat would say, named Ray. Um, you mean Sasuke character? God <laughs> yeah. damn it, Becom. At least get the guy's name right. <laughs> I, I, wait, it's not Sasuke. It's just Sasuke? Yeah, I, I don't it's just know. Sasuke. Sasuke. What the hell? I'm sorry. I'm I can't so even sorry. tell if you're fucking with me. I feel like you are. <laughs> Who doesn't know how to say Sasuke? They only, scream it, in the, they only <laughs> scream it in the anime like 50 million times. Sasuke! <laughs> Oh god. god damn it. <laughs> so they live in this orphanage together and they're like they have this like there's all these there's a bunch of kids and then there's this like one mother 
who like looks after them and she's this very like unsettling woman with like tied back hair and she's very prim and proper and she's gets she gets these like yandere eyes when they ask weird questions and mm-hmm. like so they start exploring around the grounds of this orphanage which are not very big there's not a lot of places to like hide and run um and they get to like this gate and they kind of like find themselves in a place they really shouldn't be and when they're there they basically come across these like fucking aliens who are eating or they're planning to eat at least. No, they're eating like Connie, who is like one of the kids from the orphanage. And they're obviously all horrified because like this, I think the the suspense during that scene was done really, really well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's It's pretty great. It's a pretty good twist. They see like hear something and you're like, Oh fuck. And yeah. Yeah. And so the kids put a get together like a bunch of things they'd heard. Like basically they'd been referred to like Emma, Ray and Norman as like the high quality goods of this orphanage because they're like intelligent and also they have like some abilities that the other kids don't have. Like Emma is really athletic. Uh, mm-hmm. And like, I think Norman is like a really good like strategist and Ray. The is, other like, two are just know. really fucking smart. <laughs> they're very smart. Yeah. Um, which, which was kind of hard to believe. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. the situations that they're go- probably going to be put into and stuff, and just, like, mm, we've gotten them a little bit older, maybe, but... Yeah, then, like, whatever. what is it? Is the age, like, 12, I think? 12 or, is the max age. Yeah. Uh, sounds like Wasatin and Angel Flew Down to Me would love this sh- fucking oh, setup. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, uh. the orphanage <laughs> is a fucking farm, and they're the yeah. cattle. Which They're makes like the me, cattle. Yeah. Which I thought was really interesting. So the whole outside world is run by monsters. So like yeah. these kids have to be coming from somewhere. So like I wonder if they have like breeding farms with adults. Yeah, they were kind of like talking about that in like episode two, maybe. They were like, where do we come from? We must have all come from somewhere. And I, I got this like image in my head of like the Matrix is like human harvesting fields yeah, or see, whatever. I heard, like the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah, so basically Emma decides with Norma and Norman and Ray, like we need to, we have basically a month probably before the next child is harvested based on their age, which will uh, be and, them. Yeah. I think, yeah, no, I or think maybe so. somebody else. Yeah. Or it no, might be it hasn't, one like, of the circled others. Circled as like, they're going to pluck them soon. Right. So it yeah, might be yeah, prime meat right now. Mm. Yeah. Ready to be harvested. <laughs> and so they need to figure out a way to escape before that happens. And also they like Emma specifically wants to bring like everyone with them. Like, well, doesn't, don't Ray's they like, agree like, I don't that care, they're going to do it too? They're like, we're going to do it together. I'm like, you guys are dumb. Yeah. There's no way you're going to save all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's really interesting. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I it's a really good slow burn mystery so far. Um, and it's only like 12 I, episodes though. That's weird. It is. I yeah. wonder if they're actually going to be able to do it. I feel like they could do it if they had maybe 24 or 36, because based on like the amount of uh, manga that is out, which I think is like 100 and was, some 19 chapters or something. I don't know. It's not that many chapters, actually. So uh, let's see here. Uh, well, I could be published wrong, August 1st, 2016 to question mark. So it's still ongoing. Yeah. So it's still ongoing for I now. I just don't know I, how many. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. fucking mouse not tell me volumes or chapters or anything. Hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm interested to see where this mystery goes, because, like, there's a lot of interesting ways that they could go with it, uh, and I love seeing kids die. It's the best. Uh, oh, and so- you know you're going to see a bunch <laughs> of kids die, and they're all going to have that haunted look on their face when well, they die. Well, I mean, the first one they killed was the cute little kind of not there girl who yeah, has the Connie. teddy bear, and she's dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's dead, dead. <laughs> um. So, yeah. Um, also, I, I guess I just want to shout out like the cinematography of this show. Like it, and like Leo was talking about with building the suspense, they do all these interesting shots like through mm-hmm. bushes and like Dutch angles and like all of these just like things like Did down you staircases. Dutch angles? Dutch what the angles, fuck is like, that? So a Dutch angle is like a tilted camera angle. So instead of having Dutch just like a perfectly angle. flat level with the ground camera, you tilt it at an angle and have like typically have like the person in the foreground and like the front right or left of the frame like at the tilted up angle so basically how all the characters in monogatari see the world oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly okay. that was much more helpful thank you yeah, 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 like, yeah. 
I'm like, Miko just exploited everything. Oh, and I'm like, like you know how the characters from Long Guitar see the world? And Kat's like, I got it. Yeah, like, I know immediately. When you were saying that, I just was imagining like a very fat European man with a tilted hat. <laughs> So, those are Dutch. Those are Dutch cankles, not Dutch angles. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, like like you said, going back to the truck scene, they really use those angles like really oh, yeah. well, which really just heightens that suspense and this is fucking. It's good. It's I really love good. the the staircase scene where Emma and Norman are like trying to like not let 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 it out like let it go that they figured out what's going on to the mother, and like mm-hmm. she has these eyes and she just like basically stares daggers through them. Uh, it's really intense, and so yeah, fun one to watch. Definitely going to be paying attention to this as it goes forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's move on, though. So this Ooh. one, Meet the Tokyo Renka, also <laughs> also known as the harem, the reverse harem of the season. So every season, you got to have one of these these little fuckers, right? Like yeah. we we require them. Like well, not the female that, anime in- fans. Of this community, demand one as a sacrifice it's to appease also us. An isekai. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it actually yeah. is. But, but, but a lot of, and for some reason, I don't understand why they insist on having all of them be in the Meiji area. Era. It's like it's like a. You see a lot of uh, English romances set in medieval times. It, it kind of reminds me of that. Like, oh, when things were simpler. But like, no. In reality, everyone would have their hands like in the mud. Like, it's yeah. not romantic. I don't know, but um, it's it's basically just this girl who can see ghosts, and she gets ostracized because she can see ghosts. Um, and she goes to this carnival, and this guy is like, "Ooh, would you like to come somewhere else with me?" And, <laughs> like, kidnaps her <laughs> into the into the Meiji era. And <laughs> this is why you don't talk to strangers, kids. Um. <laughs> And so she ends up in this world and gets, like, whisked away to a ball by this dude who's like, ooh, let me take you in my carriage, and then I'll call you my fiancé. And then I'll take all you my little squirrel. Yes. And, that, and, and he specifically <laughs> says that she belongs to him. I'm like, yeah, what the pretty fuck? Much. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, then we'll have you meet, like, 50 other hot boys, and they will all crowd around you. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> you will mysteriously be the only important female character. So yeah, it's it's one of those. It, it's it's not bad, but it's not good either, in my opinion. Yeah, I would say it's not bad because like I think the director is good. Like Akitaro Daichi, he directed Fruits Basket and Kodocha, Kamisama Kiss. Like this guy's pretty decent director, and like I had more fun with this like Otome game adaptation than I've had with like a bunch of the last ones I've watched. Mm -hmm. So this like if you're into this kind of thing, like this may be very much for you. Um, I even thought like some of the the goofy guys were kind of like fun. Like like I thought they were like, all right. Some of them Uh, have long hair and have decent character designs. And that's all it takes. (laughs) So. The main one, oh guy, is pretty good uh, with the red hair. Yeah. Who, yeah, the little squirrel guy. Uh, I don't like the main girl because you're not supposed to like the main girl. She's like the self-insert stupid girl of this show. They yeah. always look exactly the same. They're they're the always like hair. five foot two with brown hair and big eyes and act. I don't dumb. understand why they make them have brown hair because like all all girls in Japan have black hair. <laughs> yeah, it's always weird to me too. I don't know. It's weird. And, yeah. yeah. Well, well, like Kat said earlier, the uh, source is a mobile game, so you're supposed to run from those. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's like I said, it's not great. Like it's not, it's not like the best thing ever, but it's better than a lot of the ones that they make f- that are reverse harem. It's actually decently animated, at least. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, let's move on from that. There's not much else to say about it anyway. Yeah, it's so. a, it's pretty vapid. Let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We'll move on to Leo's favorite anime of all time. My roommate is a cat. Yes! Oh my god! It's my life! I love yes. this show this, so this, fucking much. This is not my favorite show. This show is not appealing to me at all. But it is your life. <laughs> it, it's my life. Uh, so what kind of bothered me was, uh, it's the main character. He's kind of frustrating. Uh, like there was the very first, in the first episode, there's the food thing. Which I'm sitting here and I'm like, I know what this fucking cat wants. I'm just sitting here waiting for him to figure it out, which was boring. Uh, the cat's perspective at the end is kind of unique. I just wish it's it was adorable. like funny. 
I wish it was more comedic or something. Yeah, it's actually more like, especially in the first two episodes, it's kind of more like heartfelt and a way to like find out about the backstory of the cat. Because like the cat was a yeah. stray, you know, and that's why he kind of has these like issues with like throwing away food uh, and stuff like that, which a lot of stray cats do have, especially early on. But those can like persist for yeah. a long okay. time. Psychologically. My Subaru. cat, let me just let you know, my cat was a stray cat. It's, it's a cat from the streets. And he still has problems with me putting his food down. Like, a couple days ago, I was like, I came in, and my boyfriend had fed the cat. Like, I heard it, and I ran in. I was like, no, 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 stop. And it was too late, because that fucking cat had already eaten that entire thing of food in, like, two (laughs) seconds that he put down. And then was immediately, ten minutes later, vomiting it up on the floor. (laughs) And I was like, this is why we don't do this, Londo. Look at this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh that's hilarious uh, this, so they just don't yeah. they don't they have to eat it all immediately <laughs> yeah so anyways like moving on subaru is like i during the second episode like i really got frustrated with him he's just like really naive he has like terrible social skills and it frustrates me to watch him yeah. do all this shit and i, I just hate it well and then also it, it doesn't help that all these can't tactics are really a part of my daily life, and I could just <laughs> do without more. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, it's cute though. It's ador- I will admit that he is so socially awkward as to make it a little annoying because it's it's almost not believable. Like you would have yeah. some understanding of social. Like he, it's almost like he's he's slightly autistic or something. Well, he's um, got, he's been through a hard time. Like both of his parents passed away, like at the very beginning yeah, but you of got this. The idea yeah. that even before then, like he's one of those people who just they never talk to anyone else. And I personally don't think yeah. that's a terrible thing. There, there's people that are perfectly awesome people who just are that way. Um, but he's to the point where it it's almost hard to see how he would function by himself. Yeah, like the cat basically ends up taking care of him because he doesn't feed himself when he's working on his novels. He's a writer. And he's actually fairly successful, apparently. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, but like the the guy just like he like hates everyone. He kind of like recedes from society and doesn't want to talk to people, doesn't want to go outside. He's basically a hikikomori, um, but like a successful one, which is kind of weird. Well, it's like Um, one that makes money. But I I have a feeling that unless he gets someone else in his life, he's going to die like eventually. And so he has this cat now. I also, okay, I did like how he named the cat. Like, how he just, like, went through, like, a million different names. He just laid down on the floor next to the cat, who was, like, in a cardboard box, as cats are. Mm -hmm. uh, And just said different names for, like, a freaking hour (laughs) until he said Haru, which the cat recognized because the cat had... Uh, been fed as a stray one time by this little girl named Haru and he heard like the girl's mother calling her Haru and so he associates Haru with food he thinks that's what it means and so when Subaru says Haru he gets like really excited runs to the food bowl and he's like really confused when there's no food there but uh, it ends up being good anyway so yeah I I like that like so so I think it's all the parts that center around the cat I think are really cute the uh I did like the cute girl at the uh, pet store. That was, she was real cute. I will say. And she was very helpful with picking out uh, cat food for Subaru. Who's a complete moron. How much you want to bet they end up together by the end of this season. And it's because Uh, of the cat. Like the cat somehow instigates this. The show will will not go that far. It will not put them together. (laughs) Oh, will it? No way. Are you sure you won't be eating your words, Leo? (laughs) Well, you let me know what happens because I'm not fucking watching the show. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say like her character design is way too good to not like reappear a bunch of times. Yeah, so. exactly. I mean, uh, anime is bad about people getting together. I just don't <laughs> think this show would have it into it to actually go that far. <laughs> it's it's true. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I'm I'm in it for watching more of the cat. Uh, I never mentioned this is from Studio Zero G uh, and director Karu Suzuku, who directed Dive, also for Zero G. And it's based on a web manga. Uh, yeah, it's it's a nice show. Like, it's nothing, like, spectacular, but I, I enjoy the cat parts of it, at least. So I'll watch a few more episodes, at least. I probably yeah. will continue to watch it. It's You don't have to focus on it too much, either, which is nice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Though I did have to rewatch the first episode because I missed like the first like 10 minutes. Like the first time. I just like all of it went over my head and I just started watching the cat. And <laughs> so I had to rewatch all of that. But yeah. Uh, Speaking of brilliant oh, no. shows that go over certain people's it's heads, but not brilliant people like show. me and Leo. 
I hope it burns <laughs> in hell, and I hope you guys do too. Oh boy! So this is Kamuri Kusa, which is airing on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's from Studio Yao Yorozu, who did Komodo Friends season one with director Tatsuki, who was also the writer and original creator, as we said earlier, of Komodo Friends season one. So this is the thing he did when he got his ass fired off Komodo Friends, and <laughs> he made can, a clone of it. It looks like to me. To That's me, what it's it like. Looks like. He embraced the like dark mystery side of Komodo Friends, like, and went all the way with it. And yeah. I'm like, kind of interested. Like, yeah. I'm, I am yeah. super want to know what's going on with this world and what all this I red mist is and what shit. What the fuck you mean, dark mystery? It's just a show <laughs> that, that with a bunch of cute little girls with cat uh-huh. ears, and they're yeah. running around this world. Like, it's Sounds not some great. amazing out of 10. mystery. It's so, not like it's Sherlock. <laughs> fucking homes <laughs> so i really like the characters like oh, i think God. they play really, really well really off like each the other characters three of those fucking characters are the same character <laughs> yeah, but they're so cute yeah. and when oh, there's older more sister, of them, it's even cuter. the older sister being the typical older sister and the youngest sister bouncing all over the place the was just like making sister, me smile i was like this is they're hilarious is ugly as fuck the middle sister is weird and then the little <laughs> sisters are just copies of each other it sounds like sounds great to me. I, and I will not yeah. say that she's ugly. She's just, you know, she's, she sends her cat ears down green vines that are made from yeah. the no. mana well, she's, of a she magic just tree. Just tired. Her face. She's got but some like, bags some, under her something eyes. Something went wrong when they were designing her face. I don't know what. <laughs> she looks like she's gotten punched underneath her eyes a couple times or she's something. She's just got some bags. Man, cat. Uh-huh. And she does seem mean to be, to like, slightly ill as well yeah. from using yeah. the power slightly? of the tree. <laughs> she coughed some. I'm just saying, when you're drawing a character and you don't have to deal with the natural realities of the way life is, they can be prettier than that. I don't know what's so, going on there. So they're in a post apocalyptic these... world. Come on. She's, yeah. Doesn't look like she has her makeup island. bag with her. <laughs> they're, they're stuck on this island. They're running oh. out of like fresh water for them to drink and also for this tree. Uh, that they're t- keep- keeping care of because it basically provides them with the things that they need to survive in this world. Uh, they have this enemy that they call the red bugs, which are basically like these almost machine-like spiders. Like, I don't know if they're organic or machine. They kind of seem somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, they're powered by this red energy. And so they find this new source of water, blah, blah, blah. Um, and... Uh, like the tree grants them powers when they feed it water, like these glowing green leaves that they call Kamurikusa, or it's at least one type of Kamurikusa. And so, like Rin, who is the middle sister, uses these powers to like fight against the bugs. Uh, and unfortunately, one of them though attacks her little sister, Rinako, who is like one of these like quintuplets or quadru- quadruplets, whatever. Um, who the fuck and- knows how many they are? Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the reality. He also said they, they could, like, make more. Yeah, it like, sounds like they could make more. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Rinako dies, but she doesn't just die. Like, when she's killed by the bug, she, like, fades away into transparency, like Obi-Wan Kenobi or something. Uh, <laughs> and, like, yeah, it's weird. And she disappears into this cloud of, like, red and purple Kamurikusa leaves. And so, like, I don't, I don't know. They're probably not even like really human, or if they are, they're like some weird. Well, then there is. I don't know. An actually human does show up. I don't know what they are, but they're not human. Yeah. So this guy shows up as they're like pumping the water back to like their like freaking train car that they've perched atop of like this concrete building, and this kid just like shows up in the water tank. I don't know if he came through the hose or not, but he, he came just like shows the hose. up. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, the, host, and, <laughs> the, the tree green line root thing or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. It's cool. And so he doesn't have red hair and he looks like slightly different from them, even though he's human. And so they immediately assume that he's a bug. He also has some of like red stuff on him that they associate with the red bug. So they like instantly see him as a villain. But it, it becomes clear to them sort of quickly that like he's not and that he is like just really confused about everything that's happening, but kind yeah. of wants to help. I like how like the the little sisters like they're like have to like hold him down and like <laughs> so he can't get away or whatever and like they're yeah. threatening they're like do we kill him now <laughs> and <that> shit <laughs> like that <laughs> I love all that stuff it's really good actually it do we was, exterminate yeah. him should we exterminate him now <laughs> just like um, oh man what's happening 
Uh, in the second episode, he like starts to earn Rin's trust a bit, though, and he also saves one of the little Rena sisters uh, from like this burning red fog when they're under attack by another red bug, and so that gets them like thinking, like, okay, maybe he really is on our side. Um, I don't fully trust Wakaba myself. Like, I think he could be like playing a role here or something, but I, I think you're supposed to think at this point that he is just a clueless dude. Um, but yeah. And like also Rin starts having these reactions to him. Like she starts blushing yeah. and her heart starts racing and she doesn't understand what's happening to her. And like when she blushes, like this uh, red Kamari Kusa leaf just glows inside of her. And yeah, so at the end of episode two, they all decide, like, they need to make a decision. Do we stay on the island and try to just survive on the water we have? Or do we leave and try to find, like, a safer place with more water? Yeah, there's supposed to be, like, a lake or something if they can make it there. Yeah, but it's beyond, like, a lot of, like, Mm -hmm. red bug infested lands. And so they, like, lower their train car down on the tracks. I didn't really mention it, but, like, the oldest sister, I think her name is Ritsu, uh, she can communicate through these vines. And, like, when she does, like we said before all she like sends her cat ears or her fox ears like down them and they kind of like bounce around and move when she talks it's very cute yeah. <laughs> uh, but she, she also I just has to want all of you to think <laughs> about how much time you're spending talking about the bullshit that you're talking about right now <laughs> i'm just trying to put off the next show as long as humanly possible okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for doing that. <laughs> so, but the, yeah, the last thing I want to say is that like Ritsu also has like this power to use like her her tail. She has like a tail that's like a fox tail that like attaches to the Midori tree, and so she can use these like vine like tentacles to like propel the train car into like. Sometimes she uses it to uh, like trap Wakaba like in like vines so he can't mm-hmm. move. Uh, so that's like her power, and so she like communicates with the tree. And I think that's slowly draining like the life force out of her at the same time. Yeah. But, yeah. I, will, I will say the rundown look of the world kind of made me think about a uh, girl's last tour. Yes. Oh, the, I will say that does have a similar kind of I feel to it. It doesn't mm-hmm. look as good as that. No. But, but yeah. That's um, the only, this, this show is a piece of shit and you know, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm going to take great satisfaction in that. Since I have to watch Run with the Wind, you will be You're watching so this show. Stubborn. <laughs> you know there are better shows than this, Leo. You know this. You know there are better shows. Are there though? Are God there? damn, there are. Holy <laughs> shit, Leo, come on. I don't know. I've don't seen a lot of shows this season. Don't you want to watch Bizarre Adventure? <laughs> I watched the whole fucking thing to catch up because of you. Well, we may end up watching that, too. Oh, my God, Leo. I swear to God, if you make me watch this show, you both will regret the day that you were born on this blood-soaked soil. Wow, we're going to do a lot of regretting. Uh, uh, who's who's your favorite JoJo character so far? I mean, you just watched oh. this season, right? Yeah, the, the main... Yeah. I don't know. Like they're, they're all pretty damn awesome. Like, you're, you're making it hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Whose pose do you like the best? I mean, come on, give me something. Oh, I like the the teenager. He's like he's so obnoxious and I love the way that the other characters fuck with him. Like when when he put <laughs> takes his um beatbox on the boat and the guy's like, "Give give me some of that Sprite because it's clear." And he's like, "Sure." And just gives it to him like not thinking. <laughs> Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, thank you. And just like destroys the fucking boom box. <laughs> oh, I love that show. Anyway. So, I think, can we stall any more with more JoJo talk before we... <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I would like to never mention this show. The, this one, we just, know... need, it's like, just need to rip the band-aid off yeah. and get it over with. Well, it's time to talk about the rising of the shield hero, which is airing on Crunchyroll. Uh, the, the rising of the Trump fan <laughs> in anime form. So, so this. <clears throat> so let me just say where it's from. So it's like a light novel adaptation. Studio is Kinema Citrus, which is a very good studio. They made Made in Abyss, Barakamon, Review Starlight, which was a great show that certain weird people didn't uh, appreciate for some reason. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Holy uh, shit. 
and the director oh my was. God. So basically, this this studio has a history of problematic anime, such as Made in Abyss. <laughs> well, yes, mm. I would agree with that. Um, also, the director Takao Abe worked on the show called Nor Nine, which I bet yeah. most people didn't watch. But man, was that show bad! You know what they Holy should have cow. called this? They should have called this Make Anime Great Again. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kat, so, I said we were going to joke before we got angry. <laughs> well, I guess that is a joke, technically. Wait, one last thing before we yeah. plow in. Uh, the music is by Kevin Penkin, who did the soundtrack for Made in Abyss, which was like by far the best part of that show. Um, why and, uh, why he stooped yeah. to this, I don't know. I can only assume that he was eating cat food and like needed something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I thought he saw so, the potential, cat. He saw the potential yeah. of the okay, shield. Whatever. Whatever. So I read this manga. So okay. I hear this gets announced. I'm like, oh boy. But then I <laughs> Why are you reading this manga, Leo? I demand to know why. I don't know. I don't what the know. fuck is wrong with you? It's just one of them I picked up and I've for whatever reason I've been caught up with it. What do so, you mean for whatever reason? Every <laughs> week you had to go and read another t- Filthy chapter of this fucking piece of shit on the road. It's so like knowing. saying every week I just so. go and rub my face in dog shit. I don't know why I do it. I just always end up here every week uh, with I dog like, shit on I my like face. I like the pain. I think I must like the pain sometimes. But God so damn. like, I know what's coming up. But then like. I get worried because there's a lot of people like, oh, this one looks great. Oh, and like a lot of people are getting excited. Mm-hmm. And just imagine a group of people doing this and they're just me in the back as I slowly walk backwards out of the room. <laughs> <because> I know <laughs> what's coming and I'm like, this is not good. And also I had the thought, I was like, man, all the shit I got for defending Doreku, this is... <laughs> this is not going to go over well. <laughs> this is crazy too, because like they, so they, who, the people making this, really feel like this is going to be a fucking hit too, and they they might be right. Like it's pretty popular. They really promoted yeah. the shit out of the show. I yeah. came into this not knowing shit. I was so I, excited. I was like, oh boy, they promoted this a lot. They did a special. I'm excited. Let's sit down and watch it. All right, here we go. I was like so positive. Little mm-hmm. did I fucking know what like a was in store. Forty-five minute first episode, and there's, there's already twenty-five episodes like announced to come out. Like, not many anime get that sort of treatment, right? Like, that is rare. It like that they have that much confidence. They, you understand? They basically, made the first <laughs> arc of the show like an, an anti, like like a men's activist. <laughs> Like parody. I don't even know how else to describe it. It's like, oh yeah, you know the this Me is... Too movement that just came out. Well, fuck that, and here we go. <laughs> Do you just you can't imagine. You have to just look at this from my point of view. Like, like I was the only. It's so weird because like I'm in I in this room with people. I'm on this train with all these people, but I'm the only one aware that the bridge is out. <laughs> and I'm just and like somehow uh, you're still on the fucking train. It's like you got on the train knowing you were gonna die, and you just watched everyone and then, else. And they're just like, I mean, these tracks, these tracks look really good, Leo. That I don't, I don't understand how they could possibly out. Like, and the the sound the train is making is really good. It's a really so, good soundtrack. Oh god! So basically, you just willingly let us all to to the slaughter. You're just I, like, I, I didn't ahead. say anything. I was just like, everybody's going uh, to be very disappointed in this show. Oh god! So. The show does like at one point doesn't after like the the main girl betrays him and basically says like oh he raped me but like he didn't rape her mm-hmm. and then it base doesn't he say a fucking line like I can't ever trust women they belong to the same sex as that one who betrayed me or some bullshit like that I don't know Is if it, he says that in the anime, but I think he does in either the oh, light novel I'm, I'm or the manga. I'm pretty sure because I haven't seen the Get light novel and that now. like stuck yeah. in my head. <laughs> I haven't personally read the light novel or the manga, but it has been impossible to not hear about it online since okay. the show came out. So, to me, yeah. this is like the epitome of of a victim victimhood anime. It's like this mm-hmm. whole show is built around this, oh, this poor guy, like, he's a victim. And because he's a victim, he can do whatever the fuck to anyone else because he, he has a right to do it because he was victimized. Like, yeah. like, he gets victimized and shunned by the town, which is a bad thing. 
But his response to this is to be like, you know what I should do? I should like beat up and bully merchants in the street (laughs) because, oh, I'm a victim. And so it's justified. Or like, I should go and buy a slave because I'm a victim and it's justified. Like, and like, I definitely got the sense that like when he bought that slave and he bought like the cute girl, he bought her because like he feel he, he basically, he, he realizes like, oh, I can't trust anyone anymore after what has happened to me. Like, right. Like, I don't know if he could trust men. He definitely can't trust women, yeah. but like the, the only women he could trust are ones that are sworn to obey his every command. Yeah, that, He doesn't even <laughs> say that directly. He's like, the only people I can trust in this world are people who have no choice. And I'm like, what? Is this? I he, see, I don't think oh, so. It's weird because, no. like, there's a lot of things that he says in the manga or the light novel that he doesn't say outright in the anime. No, which I is one of the weird him saying things. That Does line he say that in I don't the remember. anime? Because oh, that God. was the point at which I paused it and went what and screamed at the screen for like ten <laughs> minutes. So I remember that line. Okay. <laughs> you no, know, there is some bullshit. Um, it's so yeah. He definitely has a victim complex, and he. Feels very much that he needs to get revenge on that particular woman, and I don't know if he wants to on against other women, but yeah, and then like he starts ordering this slave to do things that she doesn't want to do, you know, it's as you do with slaves, I guess. Um, and like any time that she di- tries to disobey, she's like shocked by this like sigil that's been implanted on her chest that basically just like controls her actions, a la like Dereku, basically, like with the. <laughs> This the is even retainer. more detestable, though. Like, because this, yeah. this girl has been so fucking t- trampled in life. You can just see it in her face. And it's yeah. just... This show reviled me so much. I don't understand how it is still even slightly popular. I and don't like, understand it. The things that he has her do are presented as being, like, good for her. Because, like, oh, she needs to confront her inner demons. And I'm going to... <laughs> like order her to do it like as my slave and like that'll help her and that'll help me and it's just like i don't know like even if he is like in some ways helping her break out of her shell and like level up and become like a stronger fighter or whatever like he's doing it as his slave like it's it's really fucked up well and <laughs> like, it's also so, this yeah. whole thing of like i know what's best for her better than she knows what's best for herself true yeah. Which is another whole idea that's disgusting and I don't know. One of, the, one of the dumbest things about this anime is that they say that the world is a matriarchy. Uh, a matriarchy, oh. by the way, is a society ruled by women. Can you uh, just feel the, the hatred in yeah. this anime just seeping off of it like toxic sludge? <laughs> ah, the patriarchy. Mm. Oh, sorry, sorry, not the patriarchy. The matriarchy. Oh, yeah. the matriarchy. <laughs> Look yeah. how okay. they enslave us men under their high-heeled th- like boot. Yeah, like, and we've it's done been, because like... We've been <laughs> trampled too long, us men. God. Yeah, the only way the matriarchy like kind of like enforces itself because like there's a king there. I think there's apparently a queen we haven't been introduced introduced to yet, but the king seems to be the one with all the power and he has these male advisors. Mm-hmm. But like the matriarchy, the way it works, the only way it like, actually exerts itself on the world that we know about so far is that like if you even talk about sexually harassing a woman in this world, you are sentenced to death. And so if that's not the most contrived fucking setup I for know. like. <laughs> An anti, like, Me Too, like, fucking Brett Kavanaugh-ass fucking world. I don't know what is. It is, like, so clear to me what this show is trying to say. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. When did manga start coming out? Like, I, I almost wonder what, like, when he started writing this. Like, because it's so, it's so pointed in the cultural climate of today that I'm like, I know it had to have been a while ago for them to have enough material, but I'm also like, when, when the fuck did he write this? Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm looking it up right now. Adaptation. Uh, 2013 I, I, is when he started writing it. So, like, it's a while ago. It's six years yeah. ago. Almost. So, I actually have a question, but it's kind of a spoiler. So, I'll save it and just spoil you guys after the podcast. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's it's weird. Like, I'm trying to find things to like about the show. Like, I guess I like that he's not super powered from the very beginning and he has to, like, build himself up. But, like, I like that about all isekai, like, video game type anime. You know, like, I want to see them get stronger. Like, I want to see, like, slime dude get stronger in 
the time I was re- reincarnated as a slime. And it's like, there's just all this baggage with this show that makes it so difficult to look past any of it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It's mm-hmm. definitely a lot. Uh, uh, that, that's it. I yeah, think, don't, right? <laughs> don't fucking watch this show. Like it's, it's a piece of slime. Like it's disgusting. It, no. it doesn't need if, anyone to watch it. Like I'm not gonna like okay I'm, I'm I just want to be clear I not I don't hate you if you watch this show like I oh, watch I, a lot of shitty I anime do. too I, I hate you if you watch <laughs> oh, the show it. no you don't come on uh, I, I do <laughs> let's be real I'm gonna I judge you hardcore if you watch this show I, I'm not gonna pretend I, well, I think I will, that's fair I won't I guess. judge you if you watch a lot of shit right like you can watch mm-hmm. like hentai girls go <laughs> like on screen all you fucking want I don't care. Like you can watch a lot of shit, and I don't. I won't care. I'll judge you a little bit if you watch this. <laughs> and part of the reason for that is like uh, I think Cat and like me. I, I know Leo knows more, but I, like I've definitely been spoiled on some of the places where this manga goes later. Mm-hmm. And like it is definitely a revenge fantasy uh, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. And yeah, like I just, I just I'm not I that just interested. Don't think in we it. need something in this world telling like already impressionable young teenage guys that like oh they're victims and the correct response to having someone do something wrong to them because people are going to do shitty things to you in this life is to be resentful and hateful and just take it out on everyone around you that's yeah, not a would, good message yeah like the correct response isn't to like hate all women or even maybe even that individual woman though I can understand hating her um like the correct response is probably to like say like I'm going to get enough power to change the way this society works for the better yeah, cuz like, like, obviously they had done that, yeah. I would I would like this show still if they had been like I I've gone through this terrible thing I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do what I can with what I have and they could have had all of the elements in this show the exact same and just not had the main character be such a hateful piece of shit. Like, yeah. they could have even kept the slave and had him be like, you know what? I'm going to, like, free you. We're going to be equals in that. Like, he, they could have done so many things and just kept everything about the show different, the same, except I the just, way he acts. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to let no my silence speak for itself. <laughs> uh, Leo he, knows all. It, it's just the hateful this whole time, way I'm just that shaking my head at the, everything you guys are saying. The way that he just <laughs> takes, the, the way he takes this thing that was done to him, which was bad, and just yes. is like, this gives me a license to be shitty and do equally hateful, if not more hateful things to everyone else around me. And it's justified. That pisses me off so fucking bad. And it's not something that we should be endorsing. It's not something that should be tolerated. It's not a good attitude. Yeah, understandable. All right. <laughs> I think we've said enough about and with that. <laughs> the shield. Now hero. that you're all depressed and staring Look, down yeah. at your computer <laughs> yeah, screens. Now that and you sadness. all hate anime like us. No, we love anime. <laughs> we love anime. Especially Kamari Kuse. Anime. God, it's so good. Uh <laughs> yep. so with that, that, that'll end the first part of our winter 2019 impressions. We'll put out another episode in a few days, probably like a week from now. Um, no, no, it'll be a few days for you. Don't yeah, worry. it'll probably we'll be a few it. days from <laughs> when this releases, yes. Mm. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, remember to like, follow, and subscribe to us on YouTube to get updates on new podcasts or videos. You can also you know find you our- want to. You want oh, to go yeah. on you want to go on that podcast server and you want to leave a review and click that five star button. Mm. Oh, it feels so good <laughs> to click the five star button. Like, I'm not even joking. It feels really good. I do that on other podcasts. Oh, mm-hmm. just like I have helped these people do things <laughs> in their lives. Yeah, it's it amazing. feels like a warm cookie in your soul. <laughs> what kind of cookie? Like a chocolate chip cookie or like, like a sugar like cookie? A, your favorite like a kind. cinnamon sugar cookie. Oh, that's real good. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. So go do that and try not to get diabetes and it'll be great. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you can follow us on Google Play, Stitcher, any real podcast feed, um, Spotify. And uh, you can also check out our podcast network, Anime Radicals. Like we said, there's going to be some new episodes up on there soon. Uh, Mm -hmm. And there's one episode introducing uh, a new member of the Radicals network, JD Bowling, from the uh, Red Leaf Retrocast, who we will be doing a gaming podcast with very soon. 
uh, looking Yay. forward to 2019. Mm-hmm. And also talking a lot about Anthem. <laughs> yeah. And that demo slash beta slash alpha. So, yes. <laughs> uh, follow us on Twitter at Nerdum and Other for updates. And with that, oh, also join our Discord. Links in the description. Yeah, do it. Do it. And with all that, we will see you <laughs> next time. Yep. Yeah. Bye. Later. Bye.